Good afternoon, and welcome to our service of Holy Eucharist Rite 2 here at the Chapel of Christ Episcopal Church in Springfield. Our service of Holy Eucharist begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you upheld your service, the servant Irenaeus with strength to maintain the truth against every blast of vain doctrine. Keep us, we pray, steadfast in your true religion, that in constancy and peace we may walk in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. reading from the second letter of Timothy. Shun youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Have nothing to do with senseless and stupid controversies. You know that they breed quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kindly to everyone, an apt teacher, patient, Correcting opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant that they will repent and come to know the truth, and that they may escape from the snare of the devil, having been captive to him to do his will. The word of the Lord. Uh, the portion of the Psalter appointed for today is a uh, few is verses eight through thirteen of Psalm eighty-five. Let us read it together in unison. I will listen to what the Lord is saying, saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring forth from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it in a cellar, but on the lampstand, so that those who enter may see the light. Your eye is the lamp of your body. If your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. But if it is not healthy, your body is full of darkness. Therefore, consider the light in you is not darkness. If then your whole body is full of light, with no part of it in darkness, it will be as full of light as when a lamp gives you its light with its rays. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May I speak in the name of the one true and living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So today is the feast day of Irenaeus of, I guess you all would say Irenaeus of Lyon. I, having had way too much French in my mind lately, would go Irenaeus of Lyon. But um, I'm going to share you a little story and then we'll get into Irenaeus, which is that, to, um, in part, I guess Ka uh, Kelly may be wondering why are we doing Irenaeus. Tomorrow is the feast day of St. Paul and St. Peter and St. Paul. And I had toyed seriously with just celebrating them today. They are fairly well known. 
And, and here's a fun little trivia fact. Um, 12 years ago tomorrow on the feast of St. Peter and St. Paul, I was ordained to the transitional diaconate at uh, Trinity on, the, on Capitol Hill in Columbus. So there were lots of reasons to do St. Peter and St. Paul. Um, I was then, however, subsequently, you know, seven months later almost, ordained to the, to the priesthood on the feast of the conversion of St. Paul at St. Peter's Church in Brentwood, Pennsylvania. And I sort of joked for a while that Peter and Paul were kind of dogging me throughout my early ministry. Um, and given that, yeah, I mean, they're popular. Aren't they the world's greatest examples? I'm not sure. I mean, you know, they were constantly butting heads. Um, Irenaeus's name means peaceful one. Here it be, anyway. So, so there is that. But Irenaeus is an interesting guy in his own right. Um, and so I figured I would give you a little bit about him instead. Um, as I said, Peter and Paul dogged me most of my early ministry, and then I accepted a call to St. Christopher's and really haven't gone back to a Peter or a Paul since much. So maybe that's in my past now. Anyway, so what the official church biography says about Irenaeus, and then I'll pull two other sources. So. If theology is thinking about faith and arranging those thoughts in some systemic order, then Irenaeus has been rightly recognized by Catholics and Protestants as alike as the first great systematic theologian. There is considerable doubt about the year of Irenaeus's birth. Estimates vary from 97 to 160. It is certain that he learned the Christian faith at Ephesus at the feet of the venerable Polycarp, who in turn had known St. John the Evangelist. Some years before 177, probably while Irenaeus was still in his teens, he carried the tradition of Christianity to Lyon in southern France. His name means the peaceable one, and suitably so. The year 177 brought hardship to the mission in Gaul. Persecution broke out, and a mounting tide of heresy threatened to engulf the church. Iris, Irenaeus, by now a presbyter, which is a fancy word for a preacher or a priest, was sent to Rome to mediate the dispute regarding Montanism, which the bishop of Rome, Eleutherus, seemed to embrace. While Irenaeus was on this mission, the aged bishop of Lyon, Pothianus, died in prison during a local persecution. When Irenaeus returned to Lyon, he was elected bishop to succeed Pothinus. Irenaeus's fame rests, enduring fame rests mostly on a large treatise entitled The Refutation and Overthrow of Gnosis, falsely so called, usually shortened to against heretics. In it, Irenaeus describes the major Gnostic systems thoroughly, clearly, and often with biting humor. It is one of our chief sources of the knowledge about Gnosticism. He also makes a case for Christianity which has become a classic, resting heavily on scripture and on the continuity between the teaching of the apostles and the teaching of bishops generation after generations, especially in the great sea cities. Against the Gnostics, who despised the flesh and exalted the spirit, he stressed two doctrines, that of the creation as good and that of the resurrection of the body. A late and uncertain tradition claims that he suffered martyrdom about 202, which is why his color is red. Um, so, what I have here, now the thing about, I actually, I did the thing that I sometimes do, which is when I'm finding that I'm reading and commemorating one of the people in the church who, who have written things, I tried to see if I could find anything that they had written that was useful and fun to include in a sermon. Um, so the thing about Irenaeus, and actually about most early theologians, is basically they try to make, it's almost like a map mathematical proof of what they're saying about God. So they basically sort of say, you know, you may say this, but, but here's one scripture verse that repeats it, and here's another, and here's another, and from all of this we conclude this thing, um, which is very logical, 
but does not make for great preaching or inspirational anything. Um, maybe it does for some people. Anyway, um, so I skimmed through some of what I had to read in seminary. Um, this is some of what I had to read in seminary. And found actually one kind of thing that is that was kind of worth sort of reading aloud and sort of summarizing a little bit. Um, and this is again from Against Heresies. And it helps to know that, you know, he's writing against a particular heresy that says that everything that God created was good and everything, or everything that is about God is good and everything that's, you know, created is evil. And so what Irenaeus says about that is, and here's where I start to quote, with God there are simultaneously exhibited power, wisdom, and goodness. God's power and goodness appear in this that of his own will he called into being and fashioned things having no previous existence. His wisdom is shown in his having made created things parts of one harmonious and consistent whole. And those things which through his supereminent kindness receive growth and a long period of existence do reflect the glory of the uncreated one, of that God who bestows what is good ungrudgingly. From the very fact that these things have been created, it follows that they are not uncreated, but by their continuing and being throughout a long course of ages, they will, shall receive a faculty of the uncreated, for the gratuitous bestowal of eternal existence upon them by God. And thus in all things God has the preeminence, who alone is uncreated, the first of all things, and the primary cause of existence of all, while all other things remain under God's subjection. But being in subjection to God is a continuance and immortality, and immortality is the glory of the uncreated one. By this arrangement, therefore, and these harmonies and a sequence of this nature, man, a created and organized being, is rendered after the image and likeness of the uncreated God, the Father planning everything well and giving his commands, the Son carrying these exercise to the execution and performing the work of creating and the spirit nourishing and increasing what is made but man making progress day by day ascending to the perfect that is approximating the uncreated one for the uncreated is perfect that is god so all of this is what you know like i said it, it does not necessarily read well and that was actually one of the better bits to, to read but what you get from him is this sense of God is perfect, God creating everything with this wonderful plan and showing it all to be good even though we are imperfect, with the idea that all of us would, throughout our lives, aspire to be closer to God, closer to the perfect, closer to the eternal. Um, it sounds maybe, I mean, maybe especially for those of us in the 21st century who sort of like to preach, you know, God is good all the time, and God reminded everyone that God created everything and called it good in Genesis. Now, this sounds a little intuitive, but for a long time, even a hundred years ago, this idea was lost. And people like to think about, you know, people are evil and things are evil, and, you know. Irenaeus is one of the first who reminds us that God creates everything and calls it good. God alone is perfect. We all, but creates everything in this, his word was harmonious creation, that it all works together for the good. And he has this interesting idea that I sort of drew out of there as well, that, you know, those of us who ha are blessed with longer lives, you know, we're not mayflies or anything else, you know, we have that ability to work closer towards God and therefore closer to eternal life and the eternity and the perfect. For all of this, we thank Irenaeus and for setting us on sound doctrine. And so, Irenaeus. And now, I invite us to turn to page 387 and let us join in form three of the prayers of the people. 387. Form three of the prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of 
for the church may truly and humbly serve you, that and your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, that light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, turning to page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Peace, peace. peace to those in Facebook land, too. Peace. Um, before we move on to communion, I do have one actual announcement for this, um, which is a reminder or a notification. Uh, we will not be having this service next week. I will be on vacation, so no celebrant, no service, sad, but that's the way it goes. Um, so do not, again, if you're looking for this next week, it won't be here. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. service continues with the great thanksgiving. Eucharistic prayer B begins on page 367. The Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you
you, O oh God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with Irenaeus and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Turning to page 365, let us pray. Eternal God, 
Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.